Hi, this is David Lawrence, CEO and founder of the Mission Gate Foundation. In this video, we're gonna be talking about training to ensure safe function, both over and around community barriers. Now, the primary concern for most folks is dealing with stairs, ramps, doorways, curbs, and uneven terrain. And we're gonna start with stairs. I wanna show you a couple of things that I talk with patients about every day in the practice, and then we're gonna demonstrate that and have patients demonstrate that for us. So let's talk about going upstairs. If that patient is going upstairs and we're going to say that their left leg is the involved leg, they're always gonna step up one step at a time to start with. Now the real key, that's not the hard part. The concern part is as somebody steps up, that if you watch my foot, they don't drag the foot up the step. That foot can get caught on that lip, which is gonna trip them and bring them toppling forward. So every time the concern is when they're stepping up with this one foot, tighten those backside muscles, clear the toe from the step, and then step in. Simple as that. When I'm going up, one step at a time, going up is purely about power. Coming down is more about control. So coming up, as long as I lean into it, step up, clear the toe, and come into place. Now, let's just say someone's got strong enough that they wanna step up steps leg over leg or step over step. So we're gonna show you if they put their involved leg up first, say, gosh, how do I get the strength to lift myself up that step? That's not our concern. Our concern here is primarily to have the patient focus on leaning forward and simply extending the knee. Once that knee is straight, they can move their contralateral leg easily. So the key here is don't try to lift yourself up a step. Simply lean into the step, extend your knee till it fully straightens, and then take your opposite leg to the next step. It's as simple as that. And repeat that process on every concurrent step. Now, let's talk about going down and what are our concerns now. So if I'm in a position I'm coming down steps, remember down steps is not about control, about power, excuse me, it's about control, because energy is gonna take you down, and that's what scares people. So we have to learn to control that. If I'm gonna step down steps, and I'm saying at this point in time, my left leg is my involved leg, so I'm going to turn on a 45 degree angle towards my rail and my involved leg on the down side. So I'm gonna step out and step down. Now, why do I do that? Why do I turn? because I'm creating an energy that's gonna push into the outside of my knee, the direction my knee does not bend. Patients a lot of times wanna just come down straight and they're behind it and that knee wants to bend out from underneath them. So here, slight turn, step down, press into the outside of your leg as you step down and I get natural stability from my knee. That is one step at a time going down. Now let's say we're going in a situation where we are gonna go leg over leg or step over step down steps. And I wanna control that. I can't really do this with a KAFO as well as just an AFO, depending on the strength of, of my knee and, and the articulation structure of the brace itself. But let's say my right leg is now my involved leg. What I wanna do is I wanna take and hang about a third of the foot off the edge of the step. Why? Because most of these braces have a foot plate and if the full foot plate is on the step, it is hard to overcome and get the knee to bend to step down. So you want to clear the front of the foot, load the leg, bring your weight forward, allow that foot plate to bend and step off the step. From that position, you simply take it down and start over on the next step. So one last time, coming down steps, I'm in a position where I am here, I'm gonna hang that foot slightly off the step, stabilize, bring my weight forward, and come down off. So if you step out, there you go. Give yourself room to land your foot. Step on the outside, so the support of the lateral knee, and then down that step with control. On the bottom step, you step out, turn, and you can walk away. Step and go to it. Good, step and go to it. That's it, step and go to it. Perfect, step and go to it. Nice, good, good, step and walk away. If he has a little more strength, he can come straight down the steps. There you go, perfect, clear the toes a little bit. There you go, clear the toes a little bit. There you go, clear the toes a little bit and walk away. All right, sir, first time down, we're gonna again turn on a little bit of an angle, create some tension on the outside of your knee, not too much, and there you go, and then step down 
and just bring your other foot to it. Give yourself a little bit of room to land your other foot. So land it out there, give yourself a little bit of room. There you go. Coming all the way down, a little bit sidestepping. There you go. That's it. Perfect. Excellent. Sidestep. Good. One more time. Using the railing, slight sidestep, giving yourself a little bit of room for your other foot. Exactly. And don't be afraid to do exactly that. Adjust your foot position. Take the last, give yourself a little bit of room, and you would turn and walk away. So if you have more confidence and strength, you come straight down that step, keeping those feet face straight ahead and loading the heel as she comes down to keep the weight back and doesn't get herself tipped forward down the steps. There you go, coming straight down on the heel. Don't wanna lean back to the point where you fall back on the steps. You wanna come straight down onto the heel and midfoot. And when you get to the bottom, step away. There you go, ride that tone. There you go, and come down. Now if, so you start here. And up, leg over leg. Leg over leg, yep. So hold it for a second. If you have the strength, then she can also use some of her tone to go leg over leg. If she can get her lead leg up, then use some of that tone as she leans forward to get lift to elevate up the step. So go ahead and try that, Sarah. So if she feels confident, she can clear that foot, load onto that tone, and get that tone back to give her a good extension lift to go up the steps. That takes more strength and confidence. In this area, we're gonna talk about curbs. Now in our assembly here, we put together multiple sized stairs, but also a city curb height, about an eight inch step. What's so different about that than stairs? Well, the only difference is you aren't gonna have rails around you. So we built this in so patients can practice the idea of stepping down something a little bit steeper without rails. Again, if I'm in a situation where at this point my left leg is my involved leg, when I come to a curb like this, a couple of things I wanna do. I wanna turn on an angle, about 45 degree angle, degree angle to the edge of the curb, and then I'm going to sidestep off so I put pressure into the outside of my knee to create stability. Step down and then very importantly, step away. Why? Once you step down, if you have stability here and step down and don't move and lose your balance, you can't move your back foot and you're gonna end up falling back onto the curb. So I always talk to patients, when you come to the curb, turn slightly, step down to create a lateral energy in my knee, step down and take a step away to clear the edge of the step. If I'm going up a curb like this, the principle is the same. I'm gonna go one step at a time. It's a power issue. So basically, sound limb up, my involved leg, I'm just gonna simply clear the edge of the curb, step in place. Just a 45, don't have to go all the way to a 90 degree, so a little bit more, there you go. Now I'm just gonna be step off sideways with your left foot, pressure down, and then step away. So if the patient is strong and wants to, for a number of reasons, because involvement in the other leg, and really decides that the side with the brace is my stronger leg, and I wanna lower with that leg, then I'm gonna come down lead, put your right foot, hanging that foot a little off the edge, there you go, that's to clear the toes so that ankle will bend enough to step, and then he's gonna step off and just ride off the front of the orthotic. Now we're gonna be talking about coming down ramps. A lot of people are quite fearful of coming down steps, but ramps are actually a bigger issue, and coming down a ramp, a steeper ramp like this one, can be quite treacherous. So a couple of things are important. Number one, we talked about going up stairs or up a ramp is about power. Coming down is about control. You don't have to try to walk down a ramp, you're gonna walk. It's a matter of whether you're in control of that walk or not. So what I wanna focus on with any of my patients as they're coming down a ramp is to focus on whichever is my involved leg, let's say that's my right leg, and it could be either one. I'm going to step on that leg, and if I have an AFO or an articulating or a, a knee action so where I can get knee flexion, I'm gonna let that foot come to the plane. Now remember, think about this if you look at my foot. I cannot dorsiflex my foot freely in most of these braces. So if that's the case, I have to get my foot to a stable surface. And to do that, my knee is gonna to have to bend. That's one way to do it. So if I have an AFO, I can step and bend my knee and load my quad. From that position, I simply step through. But I can't just fall forward. I must bring it down, load my quad, and come over. 
Now, let's just say the patient can't do that. That's not a system that's gonna allow that or they don't have the strength to control that. Then coming down that step, you're gonna land on that heel. And at this point in time, you wanna press your weight backwards or down, almost like you're sitting down into that heel. Keep your weight on that heel as you step forward. Once you get to here, then you can let the knee relax. But you're using your leg almost like a stilt or a brake pedal. I'm stepping here, I'm stepping down on the brake pedal. I'm going to step forward and then I'm gonna let my knee relax to be able to take the step forward down the, down the rail. If I have a locked knee that will not bend, again, the nice thing is the surface is gonna get out of my way. So I press on that heel, I, I get stability, I step over, and then I can keep the knee straight and repeat the same process. Coming down is controlling that energy. Remember, you're gonna walk, you're gonna move. You wanna be able to control how you're moving. Now, when we're coming up the ramp, that's a little bit different. Remember, it's about power. So I don't have to worry about that control issue, but I have to get my weight forward. So at this point in time, and I'm on, the, on a ramp, I'm gonna come into that ramp and I'm gonna go and lean forward on that ramp and keep my weight forward over top of my lead leg. If I can keep my shoulders forward over my lead leg, my energy is gonna move up that ramp. Now the beauty of the ramp at that point is the ramp is pushing your foot back into knee extension. So it's giving you natural stability. It's a very stable walk. But if you don't lean it forward enough, it's gonna push you backwards and want to push you back down that hill. So going up that hill, you wanna lean into it, keep your weight forward, let the stability of the knee help you versus going down, that knee wants to unlock. So stability, power going up, control coming down. Leg is gonna give him great stability when he goes up the ramp, but it's also gonna to tend to push him back down the hill. So as he comes to a ramp, he wants to lean into that ramp a little bit, keep his shoulders or weight a little bit forward, and the steeper the ramp, the more he needs to lean forward. So go ahead and lean right into that, Martin, and walk up that step. So lean in and walk up. There you go, a little bit more. There you go, that's the idea. Now when he comes down, the opposite is important, right? That leg is gonna to wanna to get away from him. And so he bends that knee a little bit, feels the control, bends and feels the control, and then walks right through it if he feels strong enough. Perfect. So she steps in, leans forward a little bit, and just lift and step, lift and step. So she gives a very mild, but that lift makes sure that she clears that toe and doesn't drag it going up the step, or going up the ramp, excuse me. Now coming down the ramp, come a little bit closer, Sarah. Same issue for her. She's got a controlled knee, so it's a fixed knee. So she doesn't have to worry about her knee buckling, but she still has to be concerned that the whole brace wants to launch her forward or push her forward too fast. So she steps out, she's gonna kind of dig that heel in, go ahead and step down the ramp, dig that heel in to slow down her energy and then walk through it. Slow down her energy and walk through it and step away. When you step on grass or deep carpeting, anything that's soft, you gotta remember, I don't wanna be tentative, I wanna be actually more aggressive. If I step tentatively on a soft surface, it's gonna push my leg around. So when I get to a softer surface, I wanna press into the ground, I wanna make the ground kind of a, my foot adapt to the ground and, and stand up straight. And then when I come to a steeper grade, if it's too steep for me to go up over it, I wanna turn sideways, always keeping the orthotic on the low side of a hill and sidestep up the hill till you get to a flat surface and then walk away. So let's try that and be strong. There you go, heavy on that foot, turn sideways and don't cross over step, just sidestep. There you go, sidestep up the hill. There you go, pressing up that hill, pressing up that hill, pressing to the ground hard. One more step. Good, and then you turn and walk away. So I come to a steep grade. I'm simply gonna turn, keep that prosthetic or orthotic on the low side, and then sidestep down. Again, be very aggressive with how you press into the ground. So there you go, strong in the ground. There you go. Sidestep, there you go. And sidestep to it, nice big step. Press hard in the instep of the foot. Hard in the instep of the foot so it doesn't topple you like that right there. Press into the instep of the foot. Press into the instep of the foot. Good, if you feel good, you can turn and walk away. There you go. You get a little closer to the hill. There you go. Turn a little bit sideways and press off. You don't have to cross over. There you go, lean up the hill, press off. Lean up the hill, press off. Lean up the hill, press off. Get to the top, you can turn and walk away. 
because the steeper it gets, the more it wants to topple you down the hill. So step out, dig into the instep, a little bit bigger step stepping out. There you go, a little bit bigger step. A little bit bigger step. A little bit bigger step, a little bit wider. There you go, good. That's it, a little bit wider. There you go. When it starts to get level, you can turn towards me and walk away. Now, we're talking about going through a doorway or transitions. Power doors are great, but they're also very heavy. So I want you to know as you start going through a doorway, you're gonna feel a lot of resistance to that. But about halfway through that door, when you're pushing as hard as you can, the power is gonna pick up and it's gonna end up opening on you. So you need to be prepared, waiting for that to go so you don't lose your balance when that occurs. Second of all, if it takes you a second to get through the door, a lot of these power doors are set on a timer, it's gonna close. So when that closes, I'd like you to use your cane on the side of the door and just press it right up to where the door is gonna be. So when it comes and closes, it doesn't knock you over, it hits the cane and then it'll reopen itself on that contact. All right? Okay. So let's give it a try. So you're pressing, that door's pretty heavy. You gotta lean into it, lean into it. Don't try and get all the way through, just lean into it till, there you go, it picks itself up. There you go. Right, so you can use that door as a stopper, the cane as a stopper to keep that door open. Big stuff here is to realize that both of these people were trained by us, right? So they have the mechanisms on how to do this right. A lot of the stuff that they make look pretty easy is not easy. It's just they know what to do. They've had the tricks of the trade on and the training to do so. Very important that you have the right technology, which they have, and they have the right training to make that technology work. Thank you for watching and we hope you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on orthotic rehabilitation ranging from selecting the appropriate orthosis to comprehensive gait training with an orthotic. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. You can find them on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash mission gate. Stay up to date on our latest content. Click the link in the corner to subscribe and be sure to like and share this video. Also, let us know what you think in the comments section below.